Right. Now that we've talked about nucleophilic aromatic substitution, let's talk about electrophilic aromatic substitution. And the biggest difference is, in nucleophilic aromatic substitution, something over the arrow attacks a leaving group on the benzene. In the case of electrophilic aromatic substitution, the benzene attacks the thing over the arrow, so it's basically the opposite kind of reaction. So let's take this heterocycle, for example, and consider what's going to happen. How, are, how is this benzene, or not this benzene, but this heterocycle going to attack their Br2? Well, it's comparable to what we saw with the electrophilic aromatic substitutions on benzene. We saw in the case of those reactions, what happened was a double bond of the benzene went out and attacked a double bond of the benzene would go out and attack the bromine and kick the other bromine off as Br minus. And so what you would get is the two double ones uninvolved would remain the same. The other double bond would be completely gone, and a bromine would be added in its place. Now, if we say that the bromine was added here, well, this double bond's electrons were used to attack the bromine. And so this carbon lost its double bond, but gained a bromine in its place, so it remained neutral. However, this carbon gave up its double bond's electrons, but got nothing in return, meaning that this carbon will be left positive. But we see, if we look at our cover sheet, we know that all we do is add a bromine. The benzene should still be there at the end. So the last step of this reaction is always the same. Whenever you do a reaction where you temporarily break apart an aromatic ring, meaning you use up the electrons of one of those double bonds, you always reform the aromatic ring. You always reform that double bond and make the structure aromatic at the end. And the way you do that is by pulling off the proton on the carbon where the group you added was added, meaning since this is where the bromine was added, this is where the hydrogen is coming from. And so the electrons from that bond will be used to swing down and form a double bond there. Now what is pulling off that hydrogen? They don't really care. They only care about this one arrow. This is the arrow they need to see. What's pulling off the hydrogen, it could be really anything floating around, maybe the Br minus, maybe this ox or maybe another double bond of the benzene, probably not. But the point being, this is a very, very acidic hydrogen, and it's very favorable to pull it off, because what you'll end with is your reformed aromatic ring, in this case, your reformed benzene, plus the Br. And the mechanism behind how electrophilic aromatic uh, substitution on heterocycles works is very much the same idea. A double bond goes out and attacks a bromine and kicks it off. You get this kind of an intermediate where you have a carbocation, which means you lost your aromatic ring. So your final step is always to pull off a proton and regenerate it. So let's take a look at that in the context of this heterocycle up here, which by the way is called furan, F-U-R-A-N. But you don't have, you're not responsible for the names of different heterocycles, so I wouldn't worry about what it's actually called. So basically what happens is this double bond can go out and grab a bromine and kick that bromine out. Now in the case of benzene, we could have put it on any one of those carbons. There wasn't a directing group on that benzene, so it didn't really matter where that bromine ended up. But in heterocycles, there will always be a directing group because that's what a heterocycle is. It's a, it's a ring that has more than just carbon in it. And in this case, it's the oxygen. So let's consider both possibilities where I added the bromine on either the bottom or the top and the corresponding carbocation that I could get. So let's say I added the bromine on the top carbon first. So the bromine would be over here versus where the bromine, if the bromine were added on the bottom carbon here. In either way, in either case, this is the double bond that we used. So that won't be there anymore. The other double bond was untouched. And the carbocation will end up on the carbon that formerly had the double bond that did not get the bromine. So in this case, it was here, and in this case, it's here. And we have to consider, well, of these two carbocations, which one is the better intermediate of sorts? All right? Because only one of these will get us to our final product. And so let's see, what can stabilize that positive charge? In the case of the bottom one, well, it's right next to that oxygen, which is great. Those alone pairs on the oxygen can resonate down, and we get a single resonance structure. So we could have double bond O positive We have that. So that, that carbocation has a single resonance structure. But if you compare it to this, there are two resonance structures. One where the double bond resonates down and over like that, and we have 
oxygen, the ring, the positive would have shifted over to this spot right here, double bond there, bromine, and so we'd have that resonance structure. But then, just like what we saw here, that carbocation being a single bond away from the oxygen, that can resonate down like that, and so we'll have a second resonance structure, meaning we would have double bond O positive, and then double bond here in bromine. So as you can see, it's much more favorable to add the bromine to the upper point, or upper end of the double bond than the bottom end, because you get an intermediate that has more resonance and is therefore more stable. So we know that we're not going to consider the bottom, we're going to consider the top one. And so let's just finish this mechanism. How do we get to the final product then? We know that all we should be doing is drawing this with the bromine added there. Well, once again, you go to the carbon that you had the group added, there should be a hydrogen there. Some base, we don't really care what, will pull off that hydrogen, and this is the arrow we care about. The bond of the hydrogen goes to where the double bond will form. And so you'll get your final product of the furan with the bromine added to that position. So a general rule of thumb you can have for yourself with these heterocycles where it's a five-membered ring is that things tend to add in the one-two position. I guess you could consider it the ortho position of sorts, but I, I am afraid of using ortho and para to describe things here because it's not benzene, so it might look a little weird. So I'm not going to say ortho and para, I'm just going to say, let's say oxygen is one and carbon is two. Now, when there are no other groups on a ring like this, the uh, the thing over the arrow will preferentially add to that position. I have one of those two positions. You only add once, just like you only add once with benzenes. Okay? Now, what if we started putting on uh, directing groups, like donating groups or withdrawing groups? That's when things get a little trickier. So, let's say I give you a ring with nitrogen in it. Now, whether it's nitrogen, oxygen, or sulfur, the way these mechanisms work and all the rules that we give you are the same. So I could have written oxygen or sulfur here, and everything I described from the last question would still be the same as far as rules are concerned. And let's say I put an, an ester on the right and an OCH3 on the left. If you go to your cover sheet from exam one, you're gonna see that OR groups are good donating groups. And you'll see that esters, when the carbonyl is the side that's attached, are good withdrawing groups. Okay? And if we go back to our rules about what stabilizes a carbocation, because that's what we care about, the carbocation intermediate, we know that donating groups stabilize carbocations, and withdrawing groups make them less stable. Which basically means we want to add our bromine to the side closer to the donating group, or to the side that will allow us to resonate with that donating group. So let's look at that. Let's say I have my Br2 over the arrow again. First of all, what are the places available to me to add? Again, if we compare this to benzene, we saw that the only places we can add groups are where there aren't already groups. Meaning, if I said, okay, here is an OCH3, well, we know that's going to direct over a methyl, and OCH3 is an ortho para director. But the para position is filled because there's something already there. It's the same ideal here. I said before that these are the two most ideal group points to put a new group on, but there's already something there, so we can't add there. The only spots available to add are here and here, so we have to look at those individually. And once again, let's compare the stability of the carbocation we could get from adding the bromine either here or here. In the case of adding the bromine to the double bond on the right, we would get the bromine here and the carbocation right there. Now, does that look good? I hope you say no, because what we have right now is a carbocation directly next to a withdrawing group. And we said before, electron withdrawing groups do not do anything good to carbocations. They make them much less stable. So this is absolutely terrible. It's never going to want to form there. So let's consider the other double bond, the double bond that has the donating group. If we use this double bond, the bromine would have to get added here, because that's the spot that has room for it and the carbocation would end up over here. Well, 
that carbocation is right next to the donating group. And that is fabulous because what can happen now is that oxygen can resonate down and stabilize it, okay? Now, of course, the nitrogen in the ring can also stabilize that positive charge. It can resonate down itself like that. And that is still true for if we had had the carbocation on the other side with the withdrawing group, where if we had this carbocation here, that nitrogen could have resonated down. But it's a nitrogen stabilizing it and a withdrawing group destabilizing it compared to two separate groups adding to its stability. So the bromine would always be added to this side and you'd get this as your final answer. Okay? And so let's draw benzene real quick. We learned that halogens on benzene are what kind of directing groups? If I were to add Br2 over the arrow, what would, where would that bromine end up? We learned that halogens are ortho-para directors, which means that bromine would be first added to the para position if it's available. Why is bromine an ortho-para director if it's a withdrawing group? Wouldn't it, don't most withdrawing groups direct meta? The reason is because while bromine is a withdrawing group, it does function sort of like a donating group it does, meaning this bromine can resonate down. It has lone pairs just like an oxygen does. And those electrons can resonate down, forcing electrons onto the para position, so those electrons can go out and grab the other bromine. So we're gonna use this concept to explain the next question. We have oxygen in the ring. We have a double bond and we have a bromine over here. And we are going to add a Br, Br over the arrow, okay? So as usual, where are the spots we could potentially add? We have three this time, here, here, and here, but we want the best spot, the spot with the most resonance and the most stabilizing effect. Well, of course we could add it right here because we've seen if the carbocation gets put to this position, the oxygen can resonate over and over, meaning if we add the bromine here, we get the carbocation here, and then this can resonate down and that can go there. So that's pretty good, but I'm gonna argue there's a better spot. And that spot is using the other double bond. So let's say I add the bromine here. The double bond gets used up and the carbocation ends up right here on the same carbon as the bromine that was there originally. Now, bromine is an electron withdrawing group and I just went through the trouble of saying, well, withdrawing groups destabilize a positive charge. But halogens are special. They can resonate. And so while bromine has a strong inductive effect and can pull electrons away, it is just as capable as resonating, uh, just as capable of resonating in to stabilize that positive charge. And on top of that, this oxygen also has resonance with that carbocation. So this carbocation, this setup, has the most possible resonance of any other of any of the possible positions we could add the bromine to. We saw again with the one where the bromine was added to the top right position. The carbocation that we get has resonance with the oxygen, but it doesn't have resonance with the other bromine, so it's one less resonance structure. As a result, the bromine would definitely preferentially be added to that upper left position. And so you would get this as your major product. Okay? And so electrophilic aromatic substitution is probably the harder half of heterocycles and the way they react. But all, of the, all you have to do is find where your carbocation is most stable, where it has the most resonance and is closest to things like donating groups and further away from things like withdrawing groups. Minus this exception with bromine or other halogens. Because we've seen, again, halogens are capable of resonating and therefore can stabilize a positive charge. 